and welcome to Ed Up. It's all about what's trending in education. We're now nearing the end of the Christmas term, and in this COVID-19 era, virtual education has become definitely the new norm. In this mode of learning, some subject areas are more challenging to deal with. For example, physical education, carpentry, home economics. So today we're going to have a chat with a group of physical education teachers at the Doris Johnson Senior High School who would give us a bit about what their experience has been like adapting to this new learning environment. But first, the question of the day, BGCSE Mathematics. Our team took to the streets in search of the answer. Mr. Roll attended a tourist conference session beginning at 8.45 a.m. and ending at 11.05 a.m. How long was the session? A. Two hours and five minutes. B. One hour and 30 minutes. C. Two hours and 15 minutes. Or D. Two hours and 20 minutes. The answer is D, two hours and 20 minutes. C, two hours and 15 minutes. D, two hours and 20 minutes. D, two hours and 20 minutes. D, two hours and 20 minutes. C, that's two hours and 15 minutes. D, two hours and 20 minutes. Did you get the correct answer? The correct answer is D, two hours and 20 minutes. Stay with us up next, a chat with physical education teachers at the Doris Johnson Senior High School. We're chatting with physical education teachers at the Doris Johnson Senior High School and I'm going to allow them to introduce themselves to us. Natasha Curry Augustine. Um, I teach the entire school senior level 10, 11 and 12 graders. Danico Boltz, also teaching 10 to 12 grade. Doris Roll Ramsey, teaching levels 10 through 12. Thank you so much and welcome. Thank you for uh, agreeing to chat with us today. So I'll start with Ms. Augustine. Now, when you think of physical education, that's, that's not a subject that you would even imagine teaching virtually. But COVID-19 has forced us to find alternative ways of teaching our students. Now, since the new school term began, what adjustments were you making or you had to make in order to teach your students virtually? Well, one of the adjustments that I had to make was mentally. And the reason why was because I am not a classroom teacher. Um, I've been teaching for 21 years outside. And so uh, one of the things I had to do, I had to make up my mind that I have to sit down for a class period of time for an hour and teach these kids theory. If I was outside, I would give the kids some instructions and they do the instructions while I watch. Um, a lot of the physical education classes outside is observation of student participation. And so mentally I had to realize that I have to sit down and I have to talk to these kids continuously to keep them engaged um, so that they could get something out of the lesson that I was teaching. And so that was one of my biggest adjustments mentally mm -hmm. from going from outside, being an outside teacher, to sitting in the classroom and teaching. I think the biggest adjustment, um, even just reiterating what Ms. Augustine has said, is just being able to, you know, be in a setting where classes are more theory-based as opposed to participation. Um, you know, we normally come out, uh, get our kids together, um, early registration, and then we get them outside for daily activities in terms of assessing their participation and the way they, they carry out instruction during the day. So I think that's been the, the, the major adjustment that we all have had to face in the physical edu education department. For me, it has been a whole transformation. Sitting at this little gadget in front of me and trying to manipulate it and make it do what I wanted to do when I'm not used to doing that. So that has been a major challenge. I'm eventually finally getting through to the students that are there and feeling a little more comfortable with it. Most of you would have said that you encounter challenges, of course, there's gonna be challenges when you're, ch when you're trying something new. Hmm. Let's um, zero in more on those challenges. How, tell me some more about those challenges and how you adjusted. 
As was made mention, uh, one of the biggest challenges is just participation. So the way of we, that we have adjusted and adapted to that, um, we have allowed the kids to set up their, their either their tablet, their laptops, or even their tele, uh, cell phones um, in an in open area, an open space, um, where they can actually you know, exercise freely without you know, um, and experiencing any difficulties in that regard. Um, you know, and, and they've been they've been adapting to it uh, pretty well. You know, kids. It, it seems awkward at first, but I mean, you you allow the kids to even watch YouTube videos, and they are on on their computers, on social media, on different um, media platforms where they can see um, different physical activities going on. So it's not it wasn't that major um, of a difference. But the only thing is, you know, in terms of being able to see exactly who's participating, and I think that's been one of the major challenges. But the kids there, they, they've been um, easily adaptive to it. You know, we, we start with the exercises first thing, so we do our jumping jocks, and everybody's on the screen participating. You know, so like I say, assessment in that regard has been has been our greatest challenge because we are a participating um, base uh, subject. You know, but the kids they have, they've adapted to it very well. Miss Ramsey, uh, you mentioned it got it, it it's now easier. So. It was a process. Tell me about that process and those, the, the students, did you start off with a smaller group and the, nah, the group has expanded? Elaborate on your experience. Yes, it has become a little more comfortable and we did, I did start with maybe about seven to ten kids at the beginning and now I'm up to like 29 to possibly 40 depending on the grade level that I'm teaching. And they are participating. You have some who may say, my camera's not working, but as you know, we will have some challenges. But majority of them, they're participating in the classes. And we know that parents play an integral role in their child's development and education. How have you been reaching out to the parents? Have parents been receptive to you during this time? Well, um, I guess, contrary to popular belief, parents have actually been reaching out. Um, you know, and that's been a, a, a twist to the whole situation, you know, beforehand we would have to reach out to parents, but now parents have actually taken the, the, the bull by the horn, I would say, and, um, you know, and being really aggressive in terms of their, their child's education. So this year I've actually had more parents, I mean, than I've been teaching now for eight years, and these wow. parents have actually now coming on board and being more active in their, in their kids' uh, education. So I think that's been a plus. I mean, I, it mm -hmm. could probably be because of the virtual setting, you know, they, they're, they're more apt to that um, um, sort of situation. So like I say, the parent participation has been definitely an, an increase. As teachers, physical education teachers, you know, a part of your job is to, to reach or to cater to the physical makeup of the child to ensure that they're keeping healthy and physically fit. So due to the absence of that physical interaction, what are you doing to ensure or to hope that your students are keeping physically fit during this time? When everybody thinks about physical education, you know, they, they just want to go straight into the sports, you know, basketball, softball, volleyball, soccer, you know, and the like. Um, to this point, our classes have been about physical education, sorry, physical fitness and diet nutrition. And, you know, it comes right on the heels of this uh, COVID pandemic. Um, and we have taken this time to really teach and educate our kids, you know, on the importance of being physically fit. You know, we know that major um, problems or situations that may arise um, based on COVID is from underlying issues, you know, the hypertensive, um, you know, and those sort of ailments. And so we, we have been teaching our kids the importance of being physically fit, the importance of eating healthy things. They should do things they shouldn't do, you know, to allow them to be more aware, you know, of the, of the circumstance at hand, you know. So I think that has been very, very productive, you know, and um, allowing us to reach our kids to this point. Um, we have been going through exercises, so even though we start our classes or even may end our class with exercises, we let these kids know exactly, you know, how it should be done, what should be done, and we encourage them to even do it even more frequent outside of PE. You know, every single day, the same exercise that we show them, you know, the squats, the lunges, little jumping jacks, they can do these things outside of PE. Well, the bottom line is you have tried your best and you have done what needed to be done. You've made adjustments, you have adapted, and the children will be all the more better for it, whether you can see it now or not. But thank you so much for joining our chat for today. It's been a pleasure, and I'm wishing you all the best for the rest of the school year. Here are today's fun facts. Fact one, 
Recycling one glass jar saves enough energy to watch television for three hours. Isn't recycling important? The average person has the chance to recycle 25,000 cans in their lifetime. That's 75,000 hours of television. Fact 2. Eating carrots can turn your skin orange. Called carotinemia, this can happen if you eat three large carrots or more every day for a long period of time. This is because the carrots give the body too much beta carotene, which causes the changing color of your skin. Fact 3. An apple, potato, and onion all taste the same if you eat them with your nose plugged. Our sense of taste is 80% made up of our sense of smell. If you were to blindfold yourself and plug your nose, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between these three foods. That concludes our fun fact segment. There is a saying that the influence of a great teacher can never be erased. The public school system is filled with exemplary teachers. Today's star teacher hails from Doris Johnson Senior High, Mr. Aldino Russell. This year, Mr. Russell assumed new responsibilities here at Doris Johnson. He is in fact the new coordinator of the mathematics department. So in addition to his teaching responsibilities, he is challenged with the successful implementation of the mathematics curriculum here at Doris Johnson Senior High. He's a quiet force. Um, if he says, to, if he commits to something, you can take your hands off it, you know it's done. He's energetic and he moves in a quiet, gentle way. His persuasive manner and very responsible young man. I think it's his determination. He has accepted a new challenge and as you are aware, we are all charting in uncertain waters at this time and he is going just a step beyond to make sure he reaches his mathematics students. So he spends numerous hours of time trying to contact his students so much so that in every day the mathematics classes have the largest enrollment. I'm sure you realize that the males in our country in the teaching profession are a small number. He is a young, strong, qualified Bahamian male who brings a lot to the table. He brings consistency. He is dependable and he just has a resonance about him that embraces the student um, learning so that he values what he does and it shows in his interactions with his students and his department members. Today's student in the spotlight is an excellent leader. She's a 10th grade student at the Doris Johnson Senior High. Take a look. Having not met Shakira face to face, how would you describe her personality through your interactions virtually? I find it to be a very warm, welcoming, mannerly young lady. How has she stood out among her peers this school term? As you know, dealing with it virtually, you have some of those little naughty boys and girls who know how to manipulate those machines. And Shakira has been a stronghold. She said, let's focus. Let's get our work done. I can hear you, Mrs. Ramsey. I asked them to turn their cameras on. She's one of the first ones doing so. So she's very cooperative. Here are a few of MOE's calendar highlights for the month of December. For more information on these events and others, visit the ministry's website at ministryofeducationbahamas.com. Well, that concludes our show. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Adama Williams for EdUp. See you next time.